From adorable breakout stars to tragic tales of manipulation and exploitation, the lives of child actors in Tinseltown are often far from glamorous. Today, we'll shed light on the heartbreaking struggles these young performers faced while trying to navigate the ruthless entertainment industry. Here are the 10 most mistreated child stars in Hollywood history. Number 10. Judith Ava Barsi Judith Ava Barsi, a young and talented Hollywood child star, faced unimaginable mistreatment. At age 10, she had already appeared in numerous productions, lending her voice to beloved characters like Ducky in A Land Before Time and Anne Marie in All Dogs Go to Heaven. She had also acted in notable projects like Jaws 3, Punky Brewster, Cheers, and St. Elsewhere, alongside renowned celebrities. At just nine years old, she earned over $100,000 annually, signaling a promising future. Unfortunately, Judith's success fueled her father Yosef's bitterness and envy. He was a violent alcoholic who directed his anger towards Judith and her mother, Maria. The abuse inflicted upon Judith was both physical and emotional, leaving her with visible injuries. Disturbing behaviors like self-harm and mistreatment of her pet cat emerged. Recognizing the severity, Judith's agent urged Maria to seek help from a child psychologist, revealing the extent of the abuse. Children's services were contacted, but an overloaded caseworker failed to take effective action. Maria informed the caseworker about their plans to move and initiate divorce proceedings, leading to the case being closed. However, Yosef discovered their new residence and coerced them to return home. Tragically, on July 25, 1988, Yosef shot both Judith and Maria before setting their bodies on fire and committing suicide. This devastating event shocked the nation and prompted changes in child protective services laws. Don Bluth's production company was profoundly affected. A Land Before Time and All Dogs Go to Heaven, Judith's final two movies, were released posthumously and dedicated to her memory. Bluth altered the ending of the latter film to honor Judith, allowing the protagonist to sacrifice himself and ascend to heaven. Judith's headstone bears her character Ducky's memorable phrase, Yep, yep, yep. She did not live to witness the completion of her work. Judith's case stands out as a tragic reversal of the typical Hollywood abuse narrative. She suffered due to her success, while her producer and agent made earnest efforts to save her from her abusive environment. Number 9. Patty Duke Patty, originally named Anna Marie Duke, had a difficult upbringing with an alcoholic father and a mother struggling with clinical depression. Eventually, her father was forced to leave their home, and when Patty was eight years old, her overwhelmed mother entrusted her to talent agents named John and Ethel Ross, who already represented Patty's older brother. The Rosses vigorously promoted Patty's career, insisting on calling her Patty and pressuring her to use that name as well. They consistently lied about her age, subtracting two years to make her appear younger, and inflated her resume with false credits to create the illusion of more experience. To control her, they supplied her with alcohol and prescription drugs. They also exploited her financially and subjected her to frequent sexual advances. At the age of 12, Patty participated in the game show The $64,000 Question, where she was instructed to cheat and provided with the answers in advance. However, Patty's breakthrough came at 13 when she secured the lead role in the Broadway production of The Miracle Worker, portraying the blind and deaf Helen Keller. Two years later, she starred in the film adaptation of the play and won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, catapulting her to fame. At 16, she had her own sitcom where she played identical cousins. In an attempt to escape the control of the Rosses, Patty married Henry Falk, who was 31 years old when she was 18. Throughout her career, Patty Duke also battled undiagnosed bipolar disorder. Despite her struggles, she continued acting and received three Emmy Awards in addition to her Oscar. It took some time, but Patty eventually found stability in her personal life. After two short-lived marriages, she married actor John Aston, who was 16 years her senior, and their union lasted 13 years. Her fourth marriage endured for over 30 years until her death at the age of 69. 
Patty also served as president of the Screen Actors Guild for four years. Number 8. Jake Lloyd Jake Lloyd, known for his role as young Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars The Phantom Menace, faced immense challenges following the film's release. At just 10 years old and unknown to the public, Lloyd suddenly became a sensation. However, the fame brought him no real benefits. Lloyd described his post-Phantom Menace experience as a, quote, living hell. He endured daily harassment and bullying from his peers upon returning to school, likely fueled by jealousy and cruelty. The criticism didn't end there. Fans and critics harshly berated his performance, leaving a lasting impact on a vulnerable 10-year-old. The immense media pressure and relentless bullying led Lloyd to permanently step away from acting in 2001. He virtually disappeared from the public eye, only making occasional appearances at Star Wars festivals. In 2015, he made headlines for legal issues after a car chase. In 2016, Lloyd was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and admitted to a psychiatric hospital. The torment he faced after the Phantom Menace's release likely contributed to his mental deterioration, worsened by his sister's death in 2018. Mark Hamill, who played Luke Skywalker, defended Lloyd, emphasizing that he was just a child following directions. Hamill criticized the film's production team for failing to protect him. Lloyd's story reflects the struggles of many child stars. Starting their careers at a young age, they often lack the tools to handle media pressure and success. Consequently, they may face psychological disorders, substance abuse, legal issues, and more. Lindsay Lohan, Britney Spears, Justin Bieber, and others have shared similar experiences. The challenges faced by child stars highlight the need for adequate support and protection to ensure their well-being and mental health as they navigate the pressures of fame at a young age. Number 7. Lucille Rickson Lucille Rickson, a young actress in Hollywood's silent movie era, met a tragic end at the age of 14. Born in 1910, she began her career as a baby model and entered the film industry at five years old. Her family moved to California, where she caught the attention of Samuel Goldwyn and was signed with his studio. Despite her talent, Lucille remained relatively unknown. She lacked a typical childhood, working as the primary breadwinner for her family. From 1920 to 1921, she appeared in 12 films, often juggling multiple projects and promotional tours. Hollywood forced her to grow up prematurely, transitioning from juvenile roles to adult roles by the age of 12. At 14, Lucille was named a Wampus Baby Star, the youngest among her peers. She frequently acted alongside adult men known for their womanizing reputation. Rumors of her marriage to Sidney Chaplin circulated, though there is no concrete evidence. Lucille's mother approved of the romance, believing it would benefit her career. In 1924, Lucille experienced a breakdown, attributed to exhaustion or illness. The true cause of her decline remains a mystery, with speculation ranging from tuberculosis to a botched abortion. Tragically, while bedridden, her mother suffered a fatal heart attack. Three weeks later, Lucille passed away. The family doctor cited her excessive workload and poor working conditions as significant factors in her decline. Lucille's death serves as a reminder of the dangers of exploiting children's talents in the entertainment industry. Number 6. Judy Garland The struggles endured by Judy Garland, as compared to actress Patty Duke, who had a more stable adulthood, are well documented. While there are many aspects to Garland's life, I will highlight a few key points. At the age of 13, Garland signed a contract with a studio and often appeared alongside Mickey Rooney. Although Rooney spoke positively about their connection, Garland's characters were consistently rejected by Rooney's in the films, putting her in the quote, friend zone long before the term was coined. While this was scripted, it affected Garland's self-perception and eroded her confidence. Although not unattractive, Garland worked alongside exceptional beauties like Elizabeth Taylor, Ava Gardner, and Lana Turner, which made her feel inadequate. Despite her value and star appeal, Louis B. Mayer, the head of MGM Studio, referred to her as, quote, my little hunchback. 
While many child stars of that era faced strict control by the studio system, Garland seemed to bear the brunt of it. Her diet was closely regulated, and she claimed to be given drugs to cope with the demanding workload. One of her closest friends was essentially an MGM PR agent hired to manage her. Additionally, during her time, The Wizard of Oz was not considered the beloved classic it is today, leaving her with limited negotiation power. Garland married for the first time at 21 and would go on to have four more marriages. She had three children, but continued working tirelessly until her death. Despite being a living legend, she could not enjoy semi-retirement due to poor management and ex-husbands who exerted control over her finances, leaving her with little wealth. Garland's life was marked by exceptional performances and her ability to captivate the public. However, it was also marred by substance abuse, fluctuating weight, illness, self-doubt, and suicide attempts. In her later years, Garland made revealing tape recordings, expressing bitterness about the negative publicity and criticism she endured throughout her career. One of her most poignant statements reflects her inability to find solace despite her adoring public. Quote, I can't take the public home with me. While we may not attribute all of Garland's struggles to her mistreatment as a child star, it is undeniable that her experiences did not provide a solid foundation for her adult life. Ultimately, Garland's life was tragically cut short, with her passing at the age of 47 in 1969, while her former co-star Mickey Rooney lived until 2014, reaching the age of 93. Number 5. Jackie Coogan in 1921, a cinematic masterpiece emerged onto the silver screen. The Kid, a mesmerizing creation by the brilliant Charlie Chaplin. This extraordinary film propelled him into the dazzling realm of child stardom, etching his name in the annals of Hollywood history. Yet behind the scenes, Coogan's life took a tumultuous turn. Betrayed by those closest to him, he embarked on a courageous battle for justice. He fearlessly confronted his own mother and stepfather in a groundbreaking lawsuit, exposing the heart-wrenching truth of his squandered film earnings. The audacious act shook California to its core and birthed a revolutionary shield for the fortunes of young performers. The legendary Coogan Act, a gleaming beacon of hope. Undeterred by adversity, Coogan's passion for acting blazed fiercely throughout his existence. In a stroke of destiny, his name resurfaced, capturing the hearts of a whole new generation. Embracing the peculiar and delightfully macabre, he breathed life into the iconic character of Uncle Fester, bewitching audiences in the 1960s television sensation The Addams Family. A mesmerizing renaissance proving that talent knows no age and true stardom transcends time. Number 4. Corey Haim in 1986, Haim, a rising star, stood on the precipice of greatness. Roger Ebert, renowned film critic, foresaw an illustrious future, proclaiming that Haim possessed the potential to become an extraordinary actor. However, fate had a cruel twist in store. Instead of ascending to stardom, Haim's path led him down a harrowing descent. A tragic figure, stripped of his essence, reduced to a mere husk of a man. Unveiling the Veil of Silence, Corey Feldman courageously exposes the darkest chapters of Haim's life. With trembling conviction, he reveals that his dear friend fell victim to a horrifying crime, perpetuated by an influential figure within the heart of Hollywood. Feldman, bound by a sacred promise made on Haim's deathbed, embarks on an unwavering mission to expose the truth. A crusade that consumes him, drawing the ire of Haim's mother, Judy, torn between acknowledging her son's abuse and Feldman's alleged exploitation of his memory. In the present day, a restless Corey Feldman paces relentlessly within the confines of his home, anxiety gripping his every step. His long-awaited documentary, a testament to his unwavering determination, teeters on the edge of yet another delay, hindered by insurance troubles. Tentatively titled Truth, The Rape of the Two Corys, the film promises to unravel the hidden secrets, not only naming the abusers who preyed upon the two, but also unearthing a web of conspiracy shielding them from justice. Number 3. Tatum O'Neill 
In a poignant post, O'Neill discloses that heinous assaults were perpetrated by older men, whom she believed to be trustworthy figures, the epitome of safety. Tragically, due to the tumultuous battles with addiction that plagued both her parents, actress Joanna Moore and the renowned Ryan O'Neill, she found herself devoid of the vigilant supervision that should have shielded her from such horrors. One horrific incident she recounts is an assault by a close acquaintance of her father, a chilling betrayal that shattered her innocence. Additionally, she bravely reveals that her mother's boyfriend, a figure who should have offered solace and protection, attempted to violently violate her. The profound impact of these traumatic experiences resonated throughout O'Neill's life. In her poignant autobiography, A Paper Life, published in 2004, she discloses further heartbreaking truths. At the tender age of 12, she divulges being molested by her father's drug dealer, an act that scarred her in ways unimaginable. Even more heart-wrenching, she recounts an incident of molestation at the fragile age of six, perpetrated by a family acquaintance, a harrowing betrayal of trust that defies comprehension. At the young age of 10, Tatum O'Neill etched her name in the annals of cinema history captivating audiences with her remarkable talent in the iconic 1973 masterpiece, Paper Moon. Her remarkable achievement, however, is juxtaposed with the silent suffering she endured behind the scenes, a heartbreaking contrast that underscores the tragic realities lurking within the entertainment industry. Number 2. Mackenzie Phillips In a heart-wrenching revelation, Mackenzie Phillips shattered the veil of silence exposing a dark and disturbing truth that forever altered her family dynamics. It has been eight years since she bravely disclosed her long-term incestuous relationship with her own father, a revelation that inflicted irreparable damage upon their once close ties. Throughout her life, Phillips battled with drug addiction, a struggle that she openly acknowledged. During a candid interview with Oprah Winfrey, she disclosed that her first encounter with cocaine occurred at the tender age of 11. Shockingly, her father, the one who should have protected her, actively participated in her drug use. He taught her how to roll joints and even injected her with cocaine. However, after pleading guilty to cocaine possession, Phillips embarked on a path to recovery, spending a year clean as she engaged in a drug treatment program. During the early stages of the abuse, Phillips summoned her courage and confronted her father, describing the traumatic experiences as instances of rape. These deeply disturbing revelations were brought to light in her debut book, High on Arrival, where she fearlessly bared her soul and exposed the painful truth. The book unveiled a horrifying reality. The Mamas and the Papas singer John Phillips had raped her at the age of 19 while both were under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Shockingly, the abuse did not cease there as it transitioned into a consensual, yet profoundly disturbing, incestuous relationship that persisted for a decade. In her latest book, Hopeful Healing, Essays on Managing Recovery and Surviving Addiction, Phillips reveals that the repercussions of her revelations continue to haunt her family. Some members still hold her accountable for exposing their deeply buried secrets going so far as to disinvite her from important family gatherings, such as birthday parties. When Phillips first unveiled her truth in 2009, a storm of conflicting reactions engulfed her family. While some accused her of falsehoods, others harbored resentment towards her for revealing a long-kept family secret, especially considering her father's untimely passing, leaving him unable to present a counterpoint to her claims. Mackenzie Phillips is caught in a world of immense pain, where her journey towards healing is entangled with the broken pieces of her family relationships. Number 1. Shirley Temple Shirley Temple, the iconic child star of the Great Depression era, had a questionable start in Hollywood, although she couldn't be blamed for it as she was just three years old at the time. Temple rose to fame as the nation's first true child star gaining widespread recognition during the early days of the film industry. Known for her spirited personality, adorable dancing, and her trademark curly red hair, she became a symbol of innocence and joy in the midst of the harsh realities of the 1930s Great Depression. However, the beginning of Temple's illustrious career was tainted by shady practices. 
Before becoming a Hollywood phenomenon, she appeared in a series of films called Baby Burlesques. These pre-code era films featured a cast of toddlers parodying mature movies and referencing current events, actors, and politics. While the concept may seem harmless, the children in baby burlesques were made to perform in revealing clothing and mimic adult situations. In one particular film called War Babies, Temple is seen wearing a loosely fitting top that seems deliberately designed to slip off her arms in a suggestive manner. But what's even more troubling is that she had to portray the mannerisms and demeanor of a prostitute. From performing a seductive dance to being called Baby by young boys dressed as sailors, the film exploited Temple's innocence by forcing her into highly sexualized roles at such a young age. Temple later admitted that these films were, quote, a cynical exploitation of the child actor's innocence and occasionally contained racist or sexist elements. As her fame grew, so did the harsh rumors surrounding her. At the height of her popularity, rumors circulated that Temple was not a child, but a 36-year-old dwarf. The Vatican even sent a priest to confirm her age. Other rumors claimed that her iconic curly hair was a wig, leading fans to pull on her curls in hopes of exposing a bald head. Not only did Temple endure intense work and hurtful rumors, but she was also deprived of a normal childhood. Her friend Marilyn Granis, who often stood in for her on film sets, revealed that Temple's life was unnatural. She didn't attend public school or have many friends to engage in typical childhood activities like riding bikes. On set, it was mostly just the two of them, and they rarely interacted with other kids. Surely Temple's childhood was marked by constant public exposure. Whether it was her involvement in controversial films that exploited toddlers, or the relentless harassment about her appearance, her experiences set a concerning precedent for the treatment of young stars in Hollywood. And that concludes our journey through a dark side of Hollywood history. We hope this eye-opening countdown has shed light on the often overlooked struggles faced by child stars in Tinseltown. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.